on me. For lunch today, guys. Um, sad man. <laughs> <laughs> So one question I've been asked a few times is why we've been planking the boat in these different sections, one above and one below. And the answer is really simple, it's just that um, once a plank goes on, then for some time there's going to be clamps on it and there's going to be people working on it as they put the rivets in. So you can't immediately after that put the next plank on and with me and Pete both making planks, if we just started at the bottom on both sides and worked all the way up, there'd be a lot of times where we actually wouldn't be able to put the next plank on because we were waiting for the guys to finish riveting and to get all the clamps off. So this way, with one set of planking starting at the bottom and one in the middle which can then go up and down, um, there's actually six different places at any one time where a plank can be fitted. And if you had more than two people making planks, you may even have more sections um, so that more people can get more planks on at the same time. The only disadvantage perhaps of doing your planking in many sections is that you have more shutter planks to fit. Now those, remember, are the planks which uh, go in a closed gap, so they go in a space where there's a plank on either side. Um, and it's not really a disadvantage uh, because they don't really take much longer to fit, but they might take a little bit longer, they're a little bit harder to clamp and stuff. Um, so it could be a disadvantage, but you know, just having uh, a couple more shutter planks really isn't a big deal at all. Some boat builders, in fact, uh, purposefully leave a lot of shutter planks um, because if they're planking with uh, green timber that's going to dry out more uh, after it's been fastened to the boat, um, then what they will do sometimes is put on sort of runs of uh, maybe two, three or four planks with a shutter plank in between those sections and they'll leave those shutter planks out until much later on and after all that planking has dried out a little bit and it's shrunk, it might have developed gaps in between the planks but when they put those shutter planks in 
they can make those shutter planks uh, a little bit wider and it will push all the other planks together again even if they're already fastened there'll be a tiny little bit of wiggle room there and as they push those shutter planks in it'll close everything else up so that's a pretty clever method for if you have to plank with timber that's a little green i'm pretty confident about the moisture content of this planking stock so uh, we decided not to do that and just to plank the whole boat pretty much in one go Leo. Hi mom. Hi dad. Matt, do you want to be in the video? I'm in witness protection program. <laughs> Number one rule of being a witness protection Now as well as the copper rivets, there are quite a few places in the boat where we've been using bronze screws um, and that's usually just because it's an area where we uh, don't have access to put a rivet through. So for example, behind these hanging knees, uh, we decided to fasten these with bigger bronze bolts. So we've managed to get copper rivets through on this one futtock here beside the knee, but underneath the knee, rather than trying to rivet through there, there's just screws going from these planks into this futtock underneath this hanging knee. We've also used screws uh, to fasten into the stem rabbit, uh, to fasten into the transom. We'll be using screws um, in the planks behind the beam shelf um, and we will be using screws in the planks behind the build stringer too. Matt. Yes. Give us an update. What's going on today? Uh, right now I'm fitting this butt block because it's Rosie's week off. She's made most of it. All I'm really doing is taking off a couple millimeters in some places just so that it sits flat on the inside of the planking. David, what are you what are you doing today? What this are morning. We doing? Uh, today we've got uh, this port forward forward port plank here. Starboard. Starboard. <laughs> I'm facing the other way, so uh, right. in my direction, you know, uh, okay. totally makes I, sense. I, I'm working on a starboard, forward, forward starboard plank today. We got it all edge set and uh, flush to the frames and the plank below. So we're gonna start drilling now. Hey Pete. Wait. Oh, that was fucking... Hey Leo, what are you doing in there? <laughs> I'm filming you. Can you can only put the planks on from the outside. Ah. Uh. What's keeping you occupied keeping at this occupied. time? Um, this morning, I'm, uh, I'm getting ready to hang uh, a plank down here. Um, it's made, it's ready to go on, except I'm just fairing up uh, a little bit more of these frames here, uh, fine tuning them uh, to get the plank to lay right um, across all of them. And they still have a couple little humps in them here and there, but nothing major. Uh, so that's what I'm doing. Uh, Closing this window up, getting close. Cool. Yeah. How many planks left in this section? In on this side, I've got six strakes, so that's twelve planks mm -hmm. um, to close up this whole window. 
couple, cool. couple like, weeks. What's uh? A couple of years. Two more years. <laughs> <laughs> So we're gonna have a shutter plank, one on both sides here. Um, so yeah, you've been Leo's been working from the top down, and I've been working from from the garboard up, pretty much right behind the build stringer here. Um, we'll have a shutter plank, uh, so that's the final the final plank to close the hole. Okay, and then uh, tell us about the the last shutter plank of the boat. What's that one called? That the last shutter plank on the boat uh, is called the whiskey plank. Um, and that is, uh, you put it on and you drink whiskey because um, you've completed uh, your planking. Uh, it's a, a big celebration uh, of getting piss drunk. <laughs> Sometimes I've worked with guys who have put multiple whiskey planks on. Maybe every plank can be a whiskey plank. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think there, that's a, a plank's always a good excuse to have a little whiskey. So. Um, this is the clamp that Leo and I fabricated to help us rivet the butt blocks. Originally we were having a lot of problems um, riveting butt blocks because you have to clamp them into place uh, with a lot of pressure and it was hard to get the original rivet clamp. <laughs> 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 that was so good! <laughs> this is the clamp that uh, we fabricated to help us rivet the butt blocks. Uh, we designed this to sit around the frames. This kind of frees up a lot of space uh, where the butt block is and where we're doing most of the peening um, and it's made it a lot easier. So behind me is our remaining planking stock. Uh, now just to remind you, this is a timber called Wana or Red Luro. Um, I imported this directly from Suriname. It did come from a sustainably managed uh, forestry operation certified by Rainforest Alliance. Now you guys will have noticed that we haven't been steaming any of our planks. Now steaming is uh, very common in planking boats. It's where you um, generate a lot of steam, you chuck a plank in a box um, or tube or bag and you saturate it with steam for a, for a certain amount of time and it, the plank gets very bendy and it's much easier to, to twist it, bend it, edge set it and so on when it's been steamed. Um, but we haven't had to do that and that's partly because um, this timber warner is really quite a sort of bendy and supple timber um, which is great. 
Um, but it, it's largely also just because Tally Ho actually has a very sort of what we'd call an easy hull shape. There's no very severe twists or bends in it. Uh, it's a very sort of natural flowing hull shape. And so uh, none of the planks really have that uh, severe twist or bend to them. Also, the planks being narrower uh, means they have to twist less, so that helps as well. And I'd like to think that maybe my lining out job um, has something to do with it too, but who knows. Now, the other thing to take into account is the moisture content of the wood. Um, the greener or wetter a timber is, the more supple it will be, the more you can bend and twist it. Um, now, this timber, I'm not sure exactly what moisture content it is, when I got it, it was very green. Um, I put it in a sort of kiln for quite a few months, but it wasn't a kiln uh, like a commercial kiln you would imagine, which dries the wood out very quickly. It was a, um, a very low tech kiln that was sort of made in a shipping container and we ran it at a very, very low temperature and a low speed. So we weren't drying the wood out fast. We were just, it was almost air drying to be honest, but we were just giving it a little extra boost. Now measuring moisture content of timber uh, is actually a lot harder than most people realize. Of course, you can get moisture meters pretty easily, but to get an accurate reading of the moisture content, you need to know the specific gravity of that timber. And ironically, the specific gravity changes depending on the moisture content. So uh, it's a bit of a catch-22 there. So it's very easy to get a reading, but to know whether that's really accurate is uh, another story. And I think uh, moisture content and specific gravity are uh, two quite misunderstood terms, actually. So uh, I tend not to take moisture content readings uh, very often, and I haven't really been doing that with this timber. I've been just going off of how it feels, um, how it feels to sand and to work. Um, and the weight and so on, and a bit of intuition, a bit of guesswork. Um, we've basically done what we can to bring down the moisture content as far as we can, as gently as we can, um, because if you bring it down too far, you can, you can damage the wood, you can damage the internal structure of the cells, and you can um, force checking uh, in, the, in the grain um, just to drying it out too fast. So there is, I'm sure, some moisture content in it still, and that is helping us to bend it into place well. Um, I do expect it to dry out a little bit more, especially in the summer, I expect, and we probably will um, see gaps in between our planks. Uh, in the seams, there we'll start to see light coming through, um, which is completely normal in a boat being built. Um, I'm not worried about that. Uh, the corking will take care of that. But of course, we are getting all our planks as tight as possible now, so that uh, if we do get any gaps, hopefully they won't be too large. And considering what I think the moisture content of the wood is, I don't expect to see uh, any huge gaps. I don't think we're going to be sticking our fingers through the plank seams or anything like that. Of course, when the boat goes back in the water, um, all those planks will swell up again, the ones below the waterline anyway, um, and those will tighten up those seams again, um, and they'll probably get a lot tighter than even they are right now. So that'll make the hull really watertight, hopefully. The original drawings do specify a planking thickness of an inch and three eighths. Uh, we've planed all this stock down to between an inch and a half and an inch and three eighths. Uh, we tried to take it all to an inch and a half, but there were some boards uh, that were a little thinner when we got them and had defects and so on. Um, so we've taken those down to an inch and three eighths. What we're trying to do is use the thicker ones in the areas where there's more curve in the frame and where we have to carve more shape into the plank and that takes up that extra thickness. And then we can use the planks that we've already planed down to nearly an inch and three eighths uh, on the areas of the boat where there's not much curvature to the, to the frames um, and so we don't have to carve out the planks very much. But you can notice when you look at the planking that they're not all exactly the uniform thickness. Some do stick out a little more or a little less, um, and that's fine. That will all be fared off when the planking is finished. That variation in thickness also has the effect of sometimes making the corking seams look like they're thinner or wider than they really are, depending on the angle from which you're looking at them. Um, but I'm pretty confident that all our seams are uh, pretty consistent at around 3 sixteenths of an inch. Ugh. And it's getting really cold out here, so I think that's all I've got for you in terms of planking information right now. Ugh.
So I'm really pleased with how the planking is going, especially considering the time we've had off in the last couple of months. Uh, as you can see, the gaps in the planking are rapidly being filled in. We've currently got 70 planks on the boat, so only 36 left to go, a total of 106. Um, it's Thursday today, the 11th of Feb. Uh, I've been editing for a day and a half. I've got another full day of editing tomorrow, but I think that Pete and the guys will probably get a plank or two more on the boat tomorrow, so there may be even more planks on the boat by the time this video actually comes out. Now, thanks a lot for watching, and a massive, massive thank you, as always, to everyone who has supported this project in so many different ways. I know I always say this, but it really does just blow me away uh, how a community has just come together uh, to make this project possible because it really wouldn't be otherwise. So I really, really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in a couple of weeks. Cheers. <laughs>